Um, hello everyone, uh, welcome to Fluttery and uh, in this video we're going to discuss about a subject that um, is present, uh, is part of one of, one of the biggest apps uh, in the world like social medias and especially on mobile this is a subject that it's uh, well discussed and it's very important to improve user experience um, inside our apps, uh, even native apps, or in this case, uh, in Flutter apps too, which is offline first. So it's a subject that I study a lot and I learned a lot um, making this presentation for you. So let's start. Um, first of all, we need to understand uh, why and what is offline first necessary. So we need to be aware that despite the fact that we live now in a connected world that uh, almost everyone has his own smartphone, he has like a, a mobile or Wi-Fi connection uh, wherever they are in the entire world. Uh, we need to be aware that uh, there are still areas and occasions that uh, internet connection will not be strong enough or even unexistent. So in some apps, in some cases, uh, it's pretty important that the possibility to let your most important features working, whether you, had, whether you have connection or not, is really, really important. Not just to maintain this functionality working, but to improve user experience as well. So imagine that uh, you're on a train, you're in a subway, and you still need to use your app. So use offline first in these situations will allow your users to keep using your app under these uh, bad circumstances. So it's pretty important to be aware that these situations may happen and your app um, will still be useful in these situations. So basically you need to do you need to make three questions um, about is offline first necessary? So which features of your app made as offline first will improve the user experience? So you have an app with about like 10, 20, 30, 100 features, and you need to know uh, which one, uh, if we spend time, money, and development exp expertise to make this feature offline, will improve the user experience. And you need to know also if is this feature possible to be made as offline first. So one basic example that I think that most of you will understand, which is like a, a bank app where you have access to your account balance. Um, it's not a good idea, even if it's possible um, in technological terms to make this feature as offline first. It's not interest like to store your account balance in your in your phone's device um, and not letting this data like uh, real time. So even if it's technologically possible, um, you you shouldn't persist this specific data in your local device. So you need to always make these three questions every every time um, you're thinking to apply offline first in some functionality, which is your feature um, as offline first will improve user experience. Is it possible to be made as offline first? And which data should we really persist in the local storage device? Um, for example, um, I think that most of you who's watching this presentation uses like a social media as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or has its own payment app uh, on your phone, like Amazon, eBay, or some other app. Um, if you grab your phone at right now and join, uh, enter on Instagram and disable your Wi-Fi or mobile network, and you see that your app will work uh, almost a hundred percent as if you're really connected. So even offline, you can see the list of posts that are on your feed. You can uh, comment in a photo, you can like a photo, uh, you can send messages and so on. So there are apps that offline first is a must, is almost mandatory to improve user experience inside your application. But in the other way, 
there are apps that even if it's technologically possible, it's not necessary. For example, a uh, payment app. So why are you gonna uh, spend time and spend money to make an offline first feature uh, for a payment, but it's not necessary. So always be aware of this concept because offline first is a good feature, is a good thing to, to have in your app, but it's not always necessary. So in this presentation, we will make a simple workflow to, to show what offline first works. So the first, we're going to call a method and the Flutter will check our connectivity status to see if we're connected to or Wi-Fi data or, um, or mobile data. Oh, in case, if, if our phone is connected to our mobile, uh, mobile data or Wi-Fi data, we're just going to simple get the remote data and after we're going to sync our local database in your phone with the new data so the user can use the app normally. And even if it's not connected, or uh, I mean, like with no Wi-Fi data, with no mobile data, he's just going to get the local data and for the user won't change anything. So for this example, we're going to use uh, a SQL like a relational database to data persistency. And the data flow is pretty simple. We're just going to saw a view who's going to initiate a controller. In this case, uh, we're going to use a qubit, uh, which is a very famous uh, state management in the Flutter community, especially worldwide. And we're going to access the repository to get our data even remote or even local. So for this example, we're going to use the Pokemon API, which is a very famous, uh, very famous public API where most of uh, People already had contact, uh, already had developed some, some proof of concept, some basic apps using this API. It's basically going to return a list of all Pokemons available on this REST API. And we're just going to show uh, these names on the screen. So the first thing we need to do uh, about code in your app is to initialize it, is to init our database. So we just create a singleton called database helper, uh, which is every time we initialize our app, he will initialize the database and he will create the data table responsible to store these Pokemons. So it's pretty simple and there is a method called close. So um, every time you need to close the, the connection with the database, you can just close whenever you want. And after this, we need to create two remote repositories. I mean, sorry, we need to create two repositories, one remote database. So we're going to access this remote data, remote repository when we're connected to the Internet. So we're just going to uh, make an HTTP request to this URL and get the Pokemon list and return to the user on the screen. Uh, in case of uh, no Internet connection, we're just going to use the, our local database repositories. So we just go into the database and say, hey, SQL, just give me the list of Pokemons that are stored previously on our phone. So for the user, uh, even if it's connected or not uh, on internet, uh, the experience of get the Pokemon list will be exactly the same. So for state management, we're using Qubit. Uh, so in this Pokemon Qubit, we can get the Pokemon list. And in this method, we're going to check if the user has connectivity, he has connection to or mobile data or Wi-Fi data in this method. So if connectivity, if connectivity status of the phone is none, he's just going to get the local Pokemon list. Uh, and if it has the uh, connection to the Internet, he's going to get the remote Pokemon list. And after he fetches the Pokemon list, he will update the local storage. So the local storage will keep always updated with the new data coming from the API. And in the view, it's pretty simple. Uh, we create states for our qubit. So uh, states of uh, loading the Pokemon list, uh, 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 Pokemon success or Pokemon error. Um, so we create states to indicate uh, every state that our application might want to have doing these methods. So, and after this, we create a class called homepage body, which, which, which is just a list view. Uh, which contains all the Pokemons that uh, are um, that are fetched from remote or from local database. So, and this is the final result, uh, and that's the, the and that's the great thing. You have no idea which one is the offline usage or the offline usage, 
because it's pretty same. It's pretty the same experience for the final user. So it's pretty great. But um, we still have some limitations doing offline first um, because it's a feature that takes uh, time to be implemented and needs to be implemented well in order to provide maintainability of your code. So the team needs to have experience and you still need to have uh, plenty of time to do this. So in cases that this is not possible, I mean, you have a short deadline, you have a, um, develop, you have a development team that doesn't have the required experience, you still need to not do an offline first in this straight way that I showed, but you need to at least uh, give a feedback for your user um, that in this specific moment you have the connection or you're not. So this is a concept called network awareness where you will, as the name says, you will aware the user if it's connected or not. So if he's, he, if he isn't connected in the internet in this in, in this moment, you can show an alert dialogue. You can you won't allow the user to perform any any use in your app because if you don't do this, um, if your app is the same, uh, if your app provides the same feedback for your user with or without internet, um, your user will start to tap buttons. He will start to perform actions and your phone will not respond because it will return an error from the, from the HTTP request and your user will probably will get angry and will not gonna use your app anymore. It will uninstall your app or probably his user experience will be really, really bad. So at least aware the user if he's connected or not. So he can receive like a visual feedback on the screen about what's happening. And one way to do this in Flutter is we can create a mixing called no internet mixing or whatever name you want. And the thing is you need to put this mixing in every page of your app. So you can do like a stateful widget with this specific mixing and it will create a stream that will listening the connectivity status of your phone. So every time you, you lost connection with internet, you will just automatically uh, show a dialogue for your user. So the user won't be able to use your app until he gets connected again. So you start to aware the user about what's happening. So if you won't be able to implement offline first in your app, at least give this honest feedback for your user about, okay, uh, you're like, your, you're, you're like, you like our app, but in this moment you won't be able to use it because Unfortunately, you're offline. So get back in a in an appropriate moment, maybe soon. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. In um, the repository of this project is in this link. is on my GitHub. You can get in contact with me uh, on LinkedIn and hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Uh, we are a Brazilian community who's trying to make uh, videos in English to abroad globally, our, our community. So thank you very much and stay tuned.